All right, welcome everybody. Alto sax players, this is the video that I've been promising to put up for you. Uh, Mr. Lee is going to play the alto riff from Careless Whisper. All right, so first I'm gonna play it for you, and then I'm going to describe each of the musical phrases, or like we like to call licks, because we're hip with that lingo, um, on how to do it yourself so that you can begin practicing at home. So here is uh, Careless Whisper, the alto sax. Part, not the not the vocals because no one really needs to hear me do that anyway here we go let's go over that opening lick. Uh, you're going to start on a high C sharp, which is the octave key, just the octave key. Next note after the C sharp is going to be B, so octave key first finger, and then F sharp, octave key one, two, three, five, then of course D, which is octave key one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And you're going to do that sequence two times. Second lick starts on an A to a G to an F sharp. I'm sorry. My bad. Uh, a, G, D. So again, octave key down for all of this. A, octave key one, two, then G, octave key one, two, three, and then D, octave key one, two, three, four, five, six to a B. No octave key, just first finger. On that second time, we stop on the D. Okay, so again, the second lick sounds like this. So the third lick is going to start on G. So you're going to go G, F sharp. All right, so G, octave key, one, two, three, F sharp at the fifth finger. D, B, so no octave key, B, and then low G, one, two, three. So there's the third lick. All right, and the fourth lick is going to start on that G. You're going to go down to low F sharp, so you're just adding the fifth finger. And I like to do just a quick little turn, a turn, so you're going to start on the, on the G. And you're just kind of going up to the A, back to the G, down to the F sharp. So you can add that little turn in there once you get comfortable with just doing the licks. So for now, you can just go from the top of the third lick. Uh, and you can play, like, just go down to the F sharp uh, like this. When you get comfortable with that, then you can add that little turn in there. All right, now starting on that low F sharp to complete the fourth lick. So you're starting on low F sharp, and you're going kind of right up the scale there. F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp. You know, for us music theory folks, we'd like to, you know, kind of call that the Phrygian mode, if you will. So you're starting on low F sharp. Try that again. And then you go up to the high C sharp and repeat that whole four licks a second time. So 
once you get all that down, you can just play it as is, and even with a little turn in there. If you really, truly want to nail the solo while you're playing it, you must use Jazz Face. All right. So for those who've never seen Jazz Face before, um, it's going to go a little something like this, right? Because, I mean, really, anybody could learn and play like this. I mean, that's not cool, right? I mean, even though you're playing it, you got the right notes, you look like you're, you're not really interested, right? Um, and, you know, you have to really listen to the words of Careless Whisper to just get the deep meaning behind the song. So as the sax player, as the alto player, you have to kind of express that. Since you don't sing, you have to kind of express that through your face, right? And it just makes the solo that much more um, sensuous. And, and meaningful. So, so for jazz face, you want to you want to kind of get into a little bit like that, you know. So, for instance, right? Like that felt different, right? There was definitely something something different there. And, um, you know, that's something that as a sax player, you, you really got to learn jazz face. And it also works, uh, the jazz face is a nice technique and a nice skill you want to have in your um, in your repertoire because you can not only use it when you're when you're playing, but you can use it when someone else is playing. So if one of your friends is, happens to be playing it and you're really enjoying the solo, you know, you can those same facial expressions will really work and, and will intimate to the audience that you're really digging what this person's playing, so therefore they should too. And then, like, it's kind of like this sort of pay it forward thing. So, um, use the jazz face whenever you can. Don't use it in in classical um, situations. It's it's not embraced um, as much in the in the classical community. Um, so uh, be careful with that. But anywhere else in in jazz and in rock and roll and R and B, um, you know, that's what the kids are doing. So make sure you get jazz face. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed Careless Whisper. Um, get into the practice room and feel free to send me your best version. I would love to see you record yourself and uh, not only listening to you play, um, but most importantly, can you play with jazz face? Um, and then you'll really know you've kind of made it to the next level. So we're going to leave it there for today. Um, I look forward to watching your videos and we'll see you next time.